Good afternoon, everyone. Pleasure to be here to talk to you about truck platooning. Uh, it looked like there were only a few hands raised, so uh, the slide deck I have is perfect. I'll tell you what truck platooning is, how it works, how it makes trucks safer, and how we're commercializing it and rolling it out to fleets. Uh, so we'll start with a video that shows you what it is uh, in sort of a marketing image. A little later, I'll show you some of the technical details so you can understand how it really works and why it's really safe. How's Emma doing? She misses you. I know. I'll be home soon. How's it going up front? They're clearing up a jam in Grand Junction, but it should be good by the time we get there. How's it going back there? We got a challenger coming up on us real fast. Cut it, detected. All right, the challenger's exiting now. 10-4, where are you headed? I'm going home. It's my daughter's first birthday. Before you know it, she'll be running. I'm going to stop for fuel up ahead. Sounds good. I'm going to keep going. Stay safe out there. Thanks, I will. You too. Okay, so, so what you saw there was truck platooning. The basic idea is to connect a pair of trucks together using vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication. Mm. So we send data directly from the front truck to the following truck. Data like how much uh, power and torque the engine's putting out, data like the vehicle speed, uh, data like uh, the distance between the trucks. Mm. And we use that data to have that following truck react immediately and very accurately to whatever that front truck does. Mm. So when you're driving on the highway today, if you react to someone in front of you, it typically takes you between one and one and a half seconds to react. Mm. With this technology, we can react in about 30 milliseconds. Mm. So you can think of that as if you're watching a video, if in one frame of video the lead truck applies the brakes, in the next frame of video, the follow truck applies the brakes. Mm. As an engineer, I can't quite say that's an instantaneous reaction, mm. but when you're riding in the truck, it really feels instant. And I'll show a video of just how quickly they can react uh, in a minute. Mm. Uh, I won't talk much today about our cloud supervision service. Uh, we call this the network operations cloud. The basic idea of this, though, is to communicate to each truck through cellular, so through 4G and, and related technologies, and to authorize the platooning, to only authorize it when you're on the right type of road, in the right weather conditions, and the right traffic conditions. This is a really powerful way to constrain down the types of situations where the trucks will platoon to make sure they're only doing it in the situations where we have validated the system for safety. So let me talk a little bit about safety. Truck platooning has the potential here to dramatically reduce fuel use and to increase safety. And that's a little counterintuitive because we're putting the trucks much closer together and we're all taught when we learn to drive to leave space, especially in a truck, you have to leave an even larger space. But we've set our goal to be that when that truck driver pushes that platooning button, they are safer after they push the button than they were before they push the button. That's our goal. 
And we, we specified in that way to say we're really comparing the same truck, the same situation on the road, everything the same, and you're safer after you push the button than you are before. Hmm. So specifically what that means uh, is we're safer than a truck equipped with all the modern safety systems, and you're safer when platooning with all those systems compared to not platooning again with those systems. So we make it safe through the functionality. I talked about the vehicle to vehicle communication and the vehicle to cloud, safe design and implementation. So for those of you in the automotive industry or related industries, you know it requires very diligent engineering to get to a high level of safety. Uh, and we get to safety through a good user experience, making sure the driver knows what the system's doing, what it's not doing, what it's capable of, what it's not capable of, so that they can stay safe. Okay, I'm gonna go pretty quickly through this just to say today when you, fall, when you drive in a truck, um, you're supposed to follow at many hundreds of feet. Um, so about 550 feet in the US or you know, call it uh, 160 meters uh, in Europe. The reason for that is it takes you time as a human to perceive and react to what's in front of you. Uh, you might not be paying attention, you might have sneezed, or you might take a cup of coffee and you can't react immediately after that. Um, then there's a lag in the braking system between when you apply the brakes and when you actually slow down. Uh, and then there may be differences in the braking capability of your truck compared to the truck in front of you or the car in front of you. I'm going to skip ahead here just based on time and say when we get to platooning, in a second here, um, we dramatically reduce almost all those categories. So the purple block there is braking differences. There can still be some difference in braking between trucks, but the perception and reaction go down to nearly zero. We're synchronizing the brakes, so the brake lag no, no longer matters. And this is what allows us to get much closer and simultaneously to increase safety and, and prevent collisions out on the road. So, the diagram's fine, I know it's a little small. Let me show you a video of what this looks like uh, in actual trucks. So this is a couple of our test vehicles out on a test track. And what you'll see now is a series of views of hard braking by the lead truck from a highway speed, and then the follow truck automatically reacting. And we can pull the sound up a bit for this. So I want you to watch this next view from the side and see how much closer the follow truck gets to the lead truck. Again, this is hard braking. And as you saw there, the they didn't get closer at all. Started. If we tried to do that, same thing you just saw, if we tried to do that with a manual driver, with any of you paying full attention, and we slammed on the brakes in that lead truck, you would almost certainly hit the follow. We wouldn't do it because we are very safe in our testing. Uh, that follow truck would hit the lead truck. If you tried to do that same situation using radar or LIDAR or any sensor, you would still hit with a production system. You might be able to tune a special case and avoid collision. With vehicle-to-vehicle -vehicle communication, as you saw, we don't get closer at all. That's how powerful it is because we can react immediately. We can react very accurately. So immediately when the lead truck slams on the brakes, we're applying full braking. We don't wait to see how hard they're braking, we know immediately. So as you saw, very powerful to prevent those collisions. Okay, so let me talk a little bit about how we test. Uh, there's a lot of vehicle automation companies out there. Some are testing correctly, some in my view are not. So we do a combination of road test, road evaluation and mileage accumulation, a lot of closed course testing, but also a lot of hardware in the loop and software in the loop testing. All of this has to come together to get to a safety grade system like the one we've developed uh, for truck platooning. Uh, for those of you who are, are highly automotive, uh, we've done all this with ISO 26262, which is the, the ISO standard for functional safety. Uh, this is a very stringent process that a lot in the industry, a lot in the startup community of automation say, well, you can't possibly do this for a production system. I think what they really mean is it's very hard, but in my view, it's necessary uh, or something equivalent to it is necessary. In, the, in this case, we chose ISO. Okay, so one question that often comes up is we've got that driver in the following truck. They're still steering for the system, but their feet are off the pedals and they can partially relax, right? So people ask, is that driver gonna fall asleep? Will they get distracted? Um, 
you have to remember that with this type of truck platooning, the driver is still driving. They're still in command of their vehicle. They're steering. Their eyes are on the road. Um, so one way I like to describe that is if you think about your head, your eyes, and your, your feet, well, normally your head is focused on the road, your eyes are focused on the road, your feet are on the pedals. With truck platooning, with our platooning system, all of that is still true except your feet are off the pedals, right? So you're still doing most of the same driving task you had. You have the same stimulus of driving, of awareness of the road. You're now monitoring the platooning system. You get a video feed from the lead driver and you're communicating with your partner, with the platooning partner. All, what all this means is, okay, we need to evaluate in practice, do the drivers stay engaged? So we have a lot of experience from, you know, tens of thousands of miles. We're at about, you know, almost 10,000 miles a month of platooning now. Uh, plus, we're doing formal studies. All of that says no issues with the drivers. Okay, so I, I think I started on the title slide by saying it's real safety and real savings, right? So I've talked so far for 13 minutes about how does it work, why is it safe? To really get uh, the system out there, you need to be allowed to do it and you need to find a platooning partner. Hmm. So we've put a lot of effort in, in the United States, to getting platooning allowed from a regulation standpoint. Hmm. The map shown here, all the green states are states where the law has been changed to allow platooning. Hmm. The law that applies is the following distance law, the, the tailgating law. Uh, and in those states, they've created an exception to the tailgating law to say, if you are platooning, you can follow as closely as you want. So major progress in the U.S. In Europe, there's similar activities, not as far along yet, uh, but 18 states in the U.S. Hmm. So last thing I'll talk about is this is a picture of a tango, which seemed appropriate uh, in, in this part of Europe. Hmm. Um, and there's a saying, in, at least in the U.S., maybe in other countries, it takes two to tango, meaning you can't dance by yourself for a, a dance like the tango. Same thing with platooning. We need two trucks together to be able to platoon and get the benefit of platooning. In the long term, every truck out there will have platooning. They'll just find each other out on the road. Our system facilitates that. In, in the short term, we're starting with fleets that have two trucks together today. They can just platoon within their fleet. No problem. They send two trucks out together. They platoon together. In the medium term, we're building the capability to coordinate these trucks, so to find the platooning partner out on the road you get informed of that ahead of time, or you get informed on the screen in the truck or on a mobile app when you're sitting uh, having a cup of coffee before you leave. You put all that together, these fleets can platoon today and in the future uh, to save fuel and be safer. Uh, with that, I will thank you for your time and your attention.